Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Fumbling Forwards. Today, I, oh, I don't really know where to start. I promised I was going to take you through the journey with me, and I've just been reminded by one of my assistants about other people who are showing what they're going through, and that it's really helpful, and that it helps people to feel really seen and okay, and I think that's something that I... I do, but based on the past version of me, I show a lot of the past content rather than actually still going through stuff. I have obviously gone through a journey of learning about who I am and what helps me and the way that my brain works, but I'm still going through that process of understanding what my coping mechanisms are or what it is that my internal little protectors do to help me and how I can reframe it. And I had a really amazing therapy session today and I wanted to share a little bit of that with you but I also wanted to share my current living situation, some of the things that I've been going through which might seem minor but actually have been having quite a profound impact on me, my wellness. So without further ado, let's get straight into this next episode of Fumbling Forwards. Oh, I haven't got the fairy lights on and that's something that makes me feel good so we're going to pop those on. I still have a couple of episodes which I'm in the process of editing and I'm finding it really difficult getting myself around to that. I have ADHD paralysis. I also have a massive Be Perfect and I really want to be proud of the work that I create and the last episode that I did the audio wasn't like this. I didn't have a microphone. To be honest I didn't think I was going to be filming any more episodes for the foreseeable future and out of that therapy session that I had about three weeks ago I started creating content again the content's there, just hasn't been edited and uploaded. And I think part of it is because the audio quality is so bad on one of them, but the content of what I'm saying is so amazing. I'm gonna go through my therapy session first. So in my therapy sessions, a few months ago, I said to my therapist, I'm very conscious that I'm going through the same things over and over again but not to the same level. And I think a lot of it's unconscious stuff that I need to do, so like my deep inner child. And I'm finding that I'm coming every week and like offloading stuff that's happened and like being okay and getting to a point of being okay. But actually what I think would be more helpful is doing deeper work. So when I went today, I was really conflicted because there's been quite a lot of things that happened over the weekend. There's been loads of stuff with the house that's been happening over the last four weeks, which have really been impacting me in terms of like hot water, gas leaks, all that kind of stuff. Just things being out of my control, lots of stuff unfinished, dusty, messy house, all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to offload in my session, but I did say, like, I'm just conscious that this is the stuff I said I wanted to work on. And I was actually really proud of myself for being able to do that and to be able to notice the pattern that I'm going and offloading and not actually doing any long-term deeper work. So anyway, she said, well, why don't we do both? So I offloaded on some of the stuff that happened over the weekend that was an absolute nightmare. Feeling left out, feeling isolated, feeling secluded from things but also building really meaningful relationships with people who mean a lot to me. We had engineers come round and consequently there was then a gas leak, um, quite a serious one where 50% of the gas that was coming to our property was leaking inside our property. We've been having headaches and things throughout the week. Um, so we had to get an emergency engineer out, not being able to actually enjoy my weekend because I was too busy calling up and being put on hold for hours at a time, not having hot water and trying to get engineers out who have just keep like the company just keeps letting us down and causing more problems and then not solving the issue so that's just been really annoying so I offloaded everything that was going on and then she got out her cards which do I have them to hand I think I might do yeah these now these are interactive cards these are basically imagery cards that you can use to basically bring your own conscious conscious it, it sounds a little bit spiritual it's not so I can show you some of the cards Maybe I can show you some of the ones that came up in my therapy session. I actually bought these off my therapist um, because I'm also a trainee therapist and obviously learning. I'm obviously learning the whole thing and I love using imagery stuff. I find it so, so powerful. And what's really amazing is that, say, for example, you find a card, like, let's just say something, I'm just pulling one out. So let's say this card, this card stands out to you. When you are describing the card, some of the unconscious things or things that you feel less able to talk about will come out. So you might look at the card and say, right, what do you see? I see a woman who's got a basket full of soup and cookies and she's surrounded by lots of animals and blah, 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 blah. But what you might actually also see are things like, someone might say, for example, I notice a sign that says, bless this home and that might 
mean that she feels like she has to bless the home like if she doesn't have that sign it's not blessed and that could like indicate someone's belief that their home's not safe unless they bless it for example like this is just me hypothesizing but it also could be say for example like the kitten at the bottom the kittens at the bottom like the mother cat feeding all of her children well that could also be what this grandma is representing but it could be for so many different things like this could be about me talking about my grandma it could be that I am the grandma and I'm talking about my life and how I'm looking after all of the people in my life who are important for me so it's not literal it's very abstract and the cards you can pick any card and it can have a meaning for you whether you recognize anything in it or not but anyway so we looked at some of the cards and my therapist asked me to look for a card that resonated how I feel right now in the session now this is very vulnerable <laughs> so uh, I'm exposing a lot and I'm not going to share too much about what I said about the images because that's obviously very exposing for me I found some of them so this was one of them and what I see is a girl like sitting in the corner of our room with nothing feeling a bit like empty feeling empty and like there's there was a crack in the wall which I didn't notice until later on and that made me think of like we're doing bathroom renovations at the minute it's the only bathroom that we have and kind of made me feel like how all the bare walls are exposed and I don't know this is just sometimes how I feel when I'm in my depression era like I'm just a bit um empty kind of a little bit dissociative not that I'm like have an emotion or that I'm sad I'm just there just a bit empty so that was something that came up we then ended up I, I found another one which was this one um which was like somebody on a wheel with loads of different things and the reason I picked that is because it felt like there was just so much going on so much that I need to be doing and like nothing is going to plan nothing's going right everything's falling apart and it's me in the middle having to try and sort everything out and that it was just exhausting tiring um but then among closer inspection of some of the things around the corner there's things like grades well I have assignments and things that I need to have handed in um and I think I am scared of that and I have been delaying it and I've got maybe a week left to do it and this is very ADHD of me I leave everything to the last minute until I have the urgency to do it and the dopamine to do it but it's also just I've put it off because I've had so much going on and, and I've been really choosing what is my priority where does my energy need to go and that hasn't felt like a priority I've been thinking about Hertzberg's hygiene factors if you haven't seen them go google them but the basic needs of like electricity heating water and then it goes up to like um hobbies and like a sense of achievement all that type of thing the basic things I've been lacking so where you build a house on the foundations my foundations have been really wobbly so I don't think I realized the impact that it was going to have on me when we started doing this kind of stuff and I actually grew up in home renovations my dad used to buy and flip houses and he would flip them whilst we lived in them <laughs> so I remember there was a point where I was like a little girl and we didn't have any stairs so we had to go and stay luckily we had like an annex that we were staying in um, like all four of us in this annex I don't know how long it was for and I don't really have many memories but my mum or my dad would have to climb up the ladders to go and get our school uniforms and like whatever we needed out of our bedroom so anyway um, it feels a little bit like home for me being in renovations and being in rubble and it is a very familiar feeling and there's something nice about that but the inconsistent hot water has really whew, really wobbled me anyway so I then started saying, I, when I was picking cards out, I feel like this gets to the extreme and leads to this. So then she said, well, why don't we put it in like a story form? Why don't we kind of like map it out? So we did and we put like the extremes. So there was this one kind of like at the very extreme of one end. And then there was this one which was one of the ones at the extreme of the other end. And that's how I feel when like I'm on top of everything and like I've made good decisions and I feel surrounded by family and friends. Like I just feel on top of the world and like full of joy and happy and that I can do anything and any problem that comes up I can solve. So it was really fascinating to see where everything was and what leads to what. And we've started talking about family. I can't remember what it's called. My brain's hurting. So I'm not going to rack my brain for it, but internal family 
systems. That's what it's called. And it's a theory based on the things that we have in our life that we create when we're younger to protect us. So we have things like protectors and this is one of my protectors that I've talked about a couple of times about different relationships that I've had and that this is me. This is how I go into things because I'm so terrified I'm going to get hurt. I'm really careful with what I say, which is me putting on the armor. But then also what we noticed, if you actually look, he's got like little holes where his mouth is. He, he can't actually speak. He doesn't have a mouth or if he is being spoken, he's being misheard. And I often find that I'm unable to express myself with my words. And if I'm feeling pressured, I really struggle to find words to be able to share with someone how I'm feeling because of the fear that I'm feeling about being judged or being rejected or severing the relationship, which is so interesting because obviously I'm creating links between narcissistic abuse and people that I have been with who've been narcissistic and them severing the relationship when they've not agreed with what I've said or when there's been something that I've said that's not agreed with them. So it's kind of taught me, I think, to just be really careful what I say to not speak and there's also other stuff in there of like be perfect say the right things which like is in so many different situations in my life which might be so tiny like when someone goes Shh, or tells me to pronounce my words correctly or I don't know so it's just really interesting but there was something else that I noticed in this a few months ago and that I have a weapon but that I'm not using it it's just there and it's for protection but to somebody else it can be seen as that like look how scary that person is and I think that's sometimes how people do see me is that maybe I look like I'm ready to go into war but actually I'm just protecting myself I don't know but it was just really interesting so the way that this came up was I think this was at the bottom with these and I think with they're called exiles is what what we talked about so the exiles are at the bottom the things that you don't want to feel or that you don't want to like connect with they're at the bottom and then your protectors I think um are here and they come in to try and protect the exiles but what I recognized in in some of the work today that was another protector of mine which was like cope but it was kind of more coping mechanism -y. it wasn't like protector it's just where I sit and like scroll my phone and stuff. But anyway, sometimes the way that the protectors come in, I was so young when I learned how to do these things or found this mechanism of looking after myself that actually they're not completely helpful and that they don't actually help me and they actually perpetuate the feeling. So let's say this person, this knight comes in, but he can't speak and he looks absolutely terrifying. So I can't actually say how I feel. So this person still feels hidden because they can't say how they feel. But also, this person's not seen, because that's what people see, they don't see that. So when people see that, they're gonna act very differently to when they see that. So it's just kind of like bringing that into awareness. And then she was asking me questions like, so what could this protector do to help this person? And I was like, um, well, they could take their helmet off so that they could speak and so that people can see that they're a human. Um, but it's still really scary. And I was looking for something to replace this and I couldn't see a card that would replace. And what was really interesting, my therapist said, she said, well, these are all parts of you and they're parts of you for a reason. They've got really good intentions. Like this one is to protect and to look after you. It just might be that they need to learn something else to how to better help you. So it was kind of like accepting the self and accepting all the different parts of me and helping them to learn and grow the same way that I'm learning to learn and grow in the same way that you do through school and things. And I found that really, really helpful. And it's definitely worked on an unconscious level at some point. And I can't tell you how or why, but I was already talking about some of the things that I did in a situation on the weekend when I felt isolated, when I felt rejected, left out, and how I was like analyzing the situation very differently from how I used to. So this would be me kind of like reflecting and hypothesizing on all the different scenarios that could happen and me trying to find a solution, trying to find a way forward so that I am accepted and so that people do like me. And actually what I came to was that I could maybe look at the things that have already gone right in the relationships or other things not related to that thing that are good or that have gone right. And I also came to the conclusion that I don't need to be accepted by other people. And this is so standard. I know this sounds quite standard, but I don't need to be accepted by other people because I am me and I can't 
change me. I don't want to change me because when I change me, I'm not happy. I don't get my needs met. And you don't have to accept everything about everyone. You know, there's some people that I love to hang out with in certain situations. And there's some people that, you know, I don't love going out and getting drunk anymore. That's not something that I enjoy. But the people who do do that, I still enjoy spending time with them doing other things. So it's, you don't have to accept everything about everyone. And I think that really helped me today to understand that when somebody doesn't accept something about you, it doesn't mean that you're not okay as a human and that there's something wrong with you. But I think as a child, I did learn that. I learned that there was something wrong with me and it was always Frankie do this, Frankie act this way. And I internalized that as well. Like I have to be a certain way. And that's why I struggle having conversations with people. That's why I struggle like with bathroom renovations, asking engineers to do certain things and trying to explain my ideas to people. I need to write things down and it it's okay. Like I'm doing it now trying to find the right words to explain what's going on for me and it's just exhausting so this is also something that I've it's definitely a neurodivergent thing and I've seen loads of stuff I I honestly I'm so baffled by learning about neurodiversity because I've learned some stuff about how I'm, so I'm scared to even talk about it I feel like I have lots of traits of autism and there's parts of me that really does want to get tested and checked but then I keep asking myself, well, what would the benefit be that I get the support that would help and that I would need? Yes. But I think part of what I need is just to understand myself and to be able to accept myself. And I don't know if that's because of the structure of my brain or the way that my brain is wired in terms of like I can rewire. You can create new thoughts and you can create new neuropathways. But like in terms of not saying how I feel, is that trauma based or is that a mixture of trauma-based but also seeing the world as being terrifying which is a sign of autism and I do feel like the world is terrifying it's something that I've never really been open and honest about but any situation I'm in I feel like it's terrifying and I'm constantly looking for some way to make it safe everything is a threat for me and it's terrifying to say and it's I think how I've been feeling at the minute is just everything is going wrong and I'm feeling very powerless and that I can't solve it. And yeah, there's definitely things that make me feel like that's a child response. That's the inner part of me that couldn't help things as a child. But I, I don't know. Maybe this is why I do need to talk to an autis, autis, autism specialist because I don't know if it's autism or not. So I don't know enough about it. I also haven't learned about autism. So I don't, I just know what I've researched and I just know that I have some of the symptoms, but that doesn't mean that I have it and it doesn't mean that I don't. I think what I want to know is what what benefit would I get from knowing and what benefit would I get like help wise and what is that, what help is there available? What do I need? Because I think I'm struggling to find that by myself, but that's also part of the therapy journey is finding what you need anyway. So I felt like that was really helpful. Something that I realized today is that I do feel so different from everyone. I feel isolated because I do partly recluse myself but I also feel a lot of the time that I make a lot of effort with trying to make plans with people and friends and things and then it not getting reciprocated but then have I been surrounding myself with people who do do that because I am I am an anxious attachment style and I wonder if I'm attracted to avoidant attachment styles even in female friendships so I'm, I'm trying to like figure out why I feel so isolated at the moment and sometimes I can go months without seeing friends and I feel absolutely fine so what is it that's making me feel particularly isolated at the minute maybe it's because I'm seeing people start getting ready for the summer and weddings and engagement parties and all that kind of stuff but I don't know I just I have a massive feeling for social connection at the minute and to be part of something and I feel very alone. I feel very like a one-man band and that I don't fit in anywhere. And I think that's a me thing, but I also think I see things differently and I see situations differently. And I'm not I'm not prepared to be in situations where I'll hang out with people who make me feel crap. I won't do that. I won't just put up with it or just brush it off because it really affects my self-esteem. And I had to make some really difficult decisions. I had to decide whether I wanted to be surrounded by people who made plans all the time. And 
I always felt left out and like I never got an invite and I wasn't part of WhatsApp groups and stuff. So constantly feeling like I was being rejected and isolated out or to just isolate myself and not have to deal with that rejection. And it felt like a lose-lose. But I made the decision to just stop trying to be friends with people. And if people want to be friends with me, they can be friends with me. And I am surrounded by, well, not surrounded, but I do have people in my life who enjoy spending time with me and I enjoy spending time with them. And I don't feel rejected by people anymore. It's definitely a wound that I need to heal. It's happened on multiple occasions. When I was little, I was part of a big friendship group. And then when I moved up north, I lost that friendship group. And I really struggled creating that friendship group because I was from a different part of the country, spoke very differently. I lived in an area where people went to a different school and the people who I went to school with lived in a different area. So I didn't fit in either place. So I think I've always just wanted to feel part of something. And I don't know what that thing is yet. So I'm figuring that out. But the other thing that I wanted to share with you on a more personal level without diving into the psychology and all that, I saw, I can't remember what her name is, but I saw her do this. I saw her show people around her home. Obviously not the whole thing because that's a safety (laughs) issue for me. Um, I don't want people knowing exactly where I live and all that kind of jazz, which is partly the reason why I now keep my life very private. I don't share much of my life on social media, very different to how I used to be. I used to share everything. I used to share everywhere I used to eat, everywhere I used to go. And an ex-boyfriend ended up being in quite a few of the locations which I shared on social media. And it just made me feel quite unsafe. Had people turn up, ex-boyfriends turn up at my house, um, uninvited, which made me feel uncomfortable. And I've had other people know which house is mine because of where my car was parked and because I had personal reg on my car. So I've removed all of that and I'm now quite protective on my safety and people knowing where I am. So I think I'll share some of what I've been experiencing. So one of the cards that I have here is this one. (laughs) And it's somebody who, well, I mean, you might see it very differently, but I wasn't really looking at the person talking to him on the sofa but I was looking more at the items so when I woke up this morning there was some wrappers by my bed from food that I'd eaten last night there was just stuff all over the house I had a cleaner come to do an evaluation on my home and it was an absolute mess and I was so embarrassed maybe that was this voice you shouldn't be this messy but I was just so embarrassed and I kept finding myself saying gosh I'm sorry it's such a mess I'm sorry it's such a mess and that's how I feel with like the audio on the last clip like you'll hear me say a few times in the other podcast episode I'm sorry the audio is really bad there's a constant apology rather than just accepting that it's actually okay to be messy um so I have no makeup on today I I've had like a little bit of a spotty outbreak and I did pick my spots I think the reason why I'm wanting to show you this is because I'm trying to accept it myself and make it okay for me but also because if you're sitting there thinking I shouldn't squeeze my spots I shouldn't do this I shouldn't do that maybe seeing somebody else do it might make you feel like it's less of a bad thing and that it's actually normal and okay and you don't need to be perfect and you don't need to have your shit together. There's some things in my life that I've got my shit together with, but not everything. So I thought I would show you some of what I've been dealing with. (laughs) So I'll just quickly go into the bathroom. This is our bath. I have no idea of when somebody's going to be able to come and tile or fix it and it's just not very nice. You can see on the windowsill, there's just bits, holes in the walls. Yeah. So I've tried to make it as homely as possible with like little rugs and stuff. So that's one thing. (laughs) This is the other thing. Constantly hanging my clothes over the edge and not hanging them up and putting them on hangers and leaving them there and not putting them away. It was a lot worse than this this morning, but like having wrappers on the floor, like I've got one on the windowsill there where my room is normally really empty. There's now stuff for the bathroom, more clothes that haven't been hung up. I keep forgetting to take things to people's houses. So I have loads of tubwares from people. And because I keep forgetting, I'm just putting them by the front door. So 
now there's something in the way there all the stuff for the bathroom and stuff for the recycling but there's just just feels like a bit of a mess and I really struggle living in mess I like it all very clean and everything put away hmm now I know these can be seen as like first world problems but when you're getting up every single day and just seeing that everything is all over the place it really starts to grind on me and for me it's clean house clean mind and it's just a constant reminder of like you haven't finished something interestingly in our course we were talking about how depression and anxiety can often come from things feeling like they're unfinished and that that's exactly how I am at the minute when I haven't finished my chores or if I haven't finished cleaning up it leaves this kind of like state of like oh what's gonna happen like a little bit of like a fear response but there's no threat it's just that there's my body sense is a threat because it's not been finished the way I was talking to about it with one of my assistants before is like that I've got loads of loads of tabs open on my browser and that my computer's run out of RAM and is running really slow that's what it feels like when there's mess in the house it's like everything that's out is another tab every chore that's not done is another tab every task that's left pending like plastering tiling fitting the basin it will feel so amazing when it's all come together but until it's done I'm like left hanging in this perpetual state of like it's unfinished I think that's a nice thing to be aware of and it's really important when I'm feeling like this to kind of give myself time the other side of it is I've obviously had to reschedule loads of work because I can't be doing the type of job that I do helping people glow up and having conversations about their progress and um, like things that have been going on for them, things that have come in the way of their training or in the way of like their schedule. We can't really be having a conversation when there's banging going on in the background. So I scheduled out time for people to come, but then they haven't come and then now they can't come for a few weeks. So I've lost out on work, but then also I've rescheduled work for people for the boiler who then didn't turn up. So I've lost quite a few days of work, which affects me financially. And that's another thing that's like unfinished. And like, when can I fill that pot back up? So I think self-care is really important. And one of my self-cares is obviously washing, doing my skincare. And when you've got no hot water, when you don't want to have to rely on other people because you feel like a burden or it's just an inconvenience having to drive five miles to go and have a shower. It's amazing that I can do that. I know some people can't do that. But it's also like I feel like I don't quite have that relationship where I can just like lean on people for support. I would totally do it for the people like come use our shower like you can come whenever. Just give us a knock or like just let me know when you're coming around. Schedule a time in. But when it's me, I feel like I'm an inconvenience. I feel like awkward. And it's a me thing. I totally could go around to someone's house and use a shower. And I have been going to my mum's. There's other reasons why I don't want to go there for my showers and things. But um, without going into too much detail, I just don't want to rely on anyone else. Because I don't want to rely on anyone else. I think my track history is when I've relied on other people, they have the power to tell me that I can't go and... I just don't want to give anybody that power and it's it's something that is very old it's something that old relationships used to do or when I was a child would happen to me now it's like I can just go around and use the shower but I think there's a fear of me doing that so I just want to stay in my own place so I've actually been boiling the kettle and putting it in the bath and having a really shallow bath which is not ideal so the other side of it is my skincare well I just feel dusty all the time and even when I wash my face in cold water and then put my creams over the top dust goes over the top so that's not been ideal keeping one door shut so that the dust doesn't come in making sure that I've got like things like made in Chelsea getting out for walks with Louis eating good food these are all things that I haven't been doing but I know that if I did do I would feel so much better at the minute I've been sleeping a lot so I think sleep is definitely one for me but I'm also noticing am I trying to sleep through it so I don't have to deal with it it's very passive it's helpful being aware of all of these different things but Definitely holding myself accountable and going to the gym with um, Chloe and Gina has been amazing. That's been something that really, really helped. I went for brunch with Lol the other day as well, which is a good friend of mine. That was also really helpful because it just takes my mind away from all of this. I think that's something I struggle with is parking it, parking whatever's going on and getting away from it for a bit. So when you work from home, you're constantly around it and that's something I need to be able to do I did discuss going to use like a library or something um, but I went down to my local library and there was like loads of kids running around and screaming and that just was not ideal I can't do my work there so yeah I need to find a fix around maybe 
being able to work somewhere else that I can do my calls but I thought that would just be a nice update for you I'm sorry if this has been no I'm not going to apologize thank you for listening and accepting me as my as I am it's a work in progress for me I'm just allowing a lot of emotion I've been crying a lot recently and I think I'm releasing stuff that's maybe been trapped allowing energy to flow through and I'm still pushing through and one thing that I think is amazing is that I haven't gone back on antidepressants when I'm feeling depressed I'm able to deal with it and previously I always didn't want to go on antidepressants and it's not that at the minute I don't it's not that I don't want to take them it's that I don't feel I need them right now because I'm managing okay like I'm sad but it's okay to be sad I'm frustrated and I'm tired but it's okay it's a natural response given my situation whereas previously I'd be like I don't want to feel like this give me some antidepressants and it really did have a place it made me feel less intense if this did get any more intense maybe I would consider it but I'm able to function I'm able to do my work I'm able to make plans with friends and like you've seen like I've I have tied up the house looks so much better than what it was this morning so I am able to function and do things. So if it did get any worse, then maybe that would be something that I'd consider. But the support that I have for my therapist and the support that I have for my partner and my friends is enough at the minute to get me through. Not sure what, I think I also need to look after myself in other ways, but I'm learning that. It's something that I'm learning now. I hope there's been something helpful. Maybe even if it's just that you resonate and that it's okay f- that somebody else is going through the same thing. One of the things that I really struggle with is showing this vulnerable side of myself, showing the things that I still struggle with because I have this idea or understanding in my brain, belief that for you to sell a product or a service, you need to have overcome everything. And although I have overcome lots of different things and I don't have that same situation going on in my life that I help people with, for example, breakups or dealing with depression, it's something that I still have and it's something that I still go through and it is really important to be able to make it okay because accepting it, it's the paradox of change. The the more you keep trying to change, the more you're not going to change. If you keep trying to change, nothing's going to change. You need to change wanting to change. So once you find yourself accepting how you are, suddenly it changes. Once you stop trying to change, that's when the change happens. (laughs) I'm trying to just accept myself as I am. And if other people don't accept me, that's okay because you don't have to accept everything about somebody. I think I've grown up needing everybody to like me and I, I feel very unsafe and very scared when people don't like me. I feel a massive sense of social rejection or like I'll be outcast and have no one, but that's how I feel now. (laughs) and I haven't been rejected I've just rejected myself so maybe if I don't reject myself maybe if I accept myself I'll feel like other people are accepting me as well and I know that is true because there's other things that I've accepted about myself that is no longer an issue I think it's one of the reasons why I've wanted to get away from my hometown for so long because I feel so stuck that people will see me as the old version of myself or tarnish me with the way that I used to be and not see me for who I am now but if that's what they do do then that's on them because I am I'm not so different but I'm the same Frankie with the same beliefs and the same drivers and everything I just deal with everything so much better and it may not look like I do based on what I'm sharing with you now but I'm so much more compassionate towards myself and others and I'm so much more like rather than being reactive I'm thinking through things I'm trying to understand things and where I used to like problem solved through maybe blaming somebody else I'm not doing that anymore I'm trying to like understand the situation and resolve it but from me because this is a me thing I feel like I'm blabbering now and I feel like I need to add more value but this is just a check-in and not every episode has to be happy not every episode has to have a major light bulb it's the same as therapy like sometimes I go to therapy and I feel like "Mm, yeah that was all right we didn't really get much from it but maybe just being in the relationship is what's important for me maybe just staying committed, staying consistent. And it definitely is because the more that I've stuck with something, the more that I've stuck in a relationship or stuck with a book, the more I've got out of it. And maybe that's the same with this. The more that I stick with this, the more that you stick with this, maybe the more that you'll get out of it as well. There is so much more to me than what you see and what I share. And that's something I need to remember. I think I feel like I'm going to be judged off what I share 
but actually that's just the tip of the iceberg there's so much more that makes me who I am and that's why I think long form content my podcast and being with me through a lot of the things that I go through you'll see so much more to me and you'll understand me so much more and you might see more of yourself and understand so much more of yourself as well but like all of these are just different parts of me and they all exist and they're all okay and they all have good intentions their intentions are to try and be there for me and to help me and protect me so remembering that and that there's nothing bad about them but we can help them. I've just been getting ready to go to work, which is why I now have makeup on. I was just thinking about what I'd been talking about and there was something that I wanted to say that I completely forgot to record. And I feel like it's in some way important because it was quite a shift for me. My therapist asked me, what was it like for you when you felt left out on the weekend? And I said, well, it felt awful. I felt like I wasn't good enough or like they didn't want me there and like they didn't want me to be part of it. I don't know, it just didn't feel nice. I'm just jumping in here because I'm editing this back and it's really difficult to understand what it actually is that I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna tell you the situation because the reason I didn't tell you the situation because this was back months and months and months ago. It was very fresh and I didn't wanna hurt anybody's feelings. It was just something that happened and I took a kick from it. I felt left out. I was around lots of different people and there was a group of girls who were engaged who were taking a picture like this with their engagement rings like towards the camera and they didn't ask me to join in on the photo and there had been conversations with each of these girls about me being engaged as well and I felt really left out because I wasn't asked to be in the picture I was stood right next to them as they were taking the picture and a couple of them actually looked at me and then looked at somebody else before taking the picture and decided that they weren't going to invite me into the picture that's an assumption but I'm also pretty good at reading body language and I think one of the reasons why or I think the reason why I wasn't included is because of my engagement ring I'm very lucky because of the engagement ring that I have. It's gorgeous and that's what I mean when I'm talking about not being included because of my thing, my engagement ring being bigger or having more diamonds or whatever. To me, it just doesn't matter what anybody's ring is like. If you are somebody who had been engaged, if it was me in that situation, I would have said, like, anybody who is engaged get in this photo so that there was inclusivity but there was, I was the only person in that room who was also engaged who wasn't included in that photo and it, it felt pretty shit. But I also could have said, let me jump in. But I also didn't want to intrude myself in because that's, I wasn't welcome. And I don't want to go where I'm not welcome. And I think when my therapist was asking me about, is that really what you wanted? Because I'm not I, I don't want to be part of a group like that. I don't want to be part of a judgmental group who leave people out because of their things. And it might not even have been about my ring. That's just, I guess, a trauma re response approach or assumption and also an educated guess. But it is still an assumption. It might not have been about the ring at all. And I wouldn't know unless I had that conversation. And I could have had a conversation, but it wasn't the time or place. There was alcohol and I don't really spend enough time with these people to be included. But then there's been other situations where I haven't been included or we haven't been included. Um, so I'm just reading between the lines that they just don't want to spend time with us and that we bring stuff up for them. And that is OK. So, yeah, I thought I would just share it with you. God, it's terrifying. It sounds like you're trying to figure out the Da Vinci code when I'm saying what I'm saying. So I think if I just tell you <laughs> the situation, you'll be able to understand more. What I mean about being perceived, other people perceiving that I have nicer things because I didn't really say what it was. And it's not that I'm better in some way than the other person. What I'm trying to highlight is that other people, it felt like other people were leaving me out because they felt their ring was inferior to mine. It just felt a bit like a competition and I didn't like the vibe. I said something like, I know people do things without realizing that they do them, but I also know that people do things intentionally sometimes. And she went, what would, what's the difference? What would the difference be if they did it intentionally and they intentionally left you out? And I said, well, it would still feel shit, but I think I wouldn't feel as like, as though it was me. I would feel like it wasn't me that was the problem. And like, they might just not wanna hang out with me for whatever reason. And then I felt really big headed and so bad for thinking this, but I said, I feel like they could be leaving me out 
because they perceived me to be better in some way um, that I would up show them and they didn't want that. Totally understand that and it's totally fine. But it was not nice to feel like I had been left out because of something that was completely out of my control. This is all hypothesizing. Why would somebody intentionally leave me out? Well, there could be a number of different reasons. They could just not like me, blah, 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 blah. And I don't believe that I'm better than anybody. I just think everyone is the same. And this is like, I think this is just part of me. Like I see everybody as just a person and I find it really difficult when people categorize others based on things that they have or what they perceive as success because everyone has a different measure of success. I've been brought up where I've been mixed with so many different people who have different backgrounds, different upbringings, different things. But basically I said that that still felt shit, being left out because of something that the other person thought. And she said, well, did you want to be part of that? And I said, yeah, because I didn't want to be left out. And she said, but did you actually want that thing? Like, did you actually want it? I said, well, no, like I'm not in that that like phase anymore. I think I just wanted to be part of the group. I just wanted to be part of it. What would it have been like if you were part of it? I said, mm, I would have felt like I was accepted or like part of the thing that we were all, that we all shared in common and that it had been acknowledged. But that's not me anymore to do that thing. So it was actually okay that I wasn't part of it. I think there was just a part of me that thought it would have been nice. Maybe it was an old part of me. I don't know. And I still don't quite know what my therapist was trying to get at. But I know that from the situation, I felt left out because we all had something in common and I was left out. I also know that I think I could have been left out for a reason and that's okay. That's the other person's stuff. And it's actually quite a compliment. I just want everyone to get along and be friends. I feel like that girl out of um, Mean Girls where she's like, it's not my fault I've got a wide set vagina and a heavy flow. And she's like, I just want everyone to eat cake and be happy. Do you even go here? I feel like that girl. But I also know that that version of me that wanted to be included in said thing, that part of me doesn't really exist anymore. I don't really, I don't share much on my social, my private social media about the people that I hang around with and the kind of things that we get up to. I don't feel showy in that way anymore. I don't feel like I need to show my achievements or show, like it doesn't make it bad that people are showing it. It doesn't make it good. It's just, it's not me anymore. I used to always be showing things that I was doing or like the new car that I got because it was a huge achievement for me and I did want it acknowledged because I'd worked so hard and eventually managed to get something. But now... It's like I don't, it's like it's all mine. And like, I just don't want to show any of it because it's all just mine and I'm protecting it. And that's okay that I'm doing that. So I think in hindsight, I did feel upset that I wasn't even asked to do the thing, but I probably would have done it and then been like, oh, I don't really want that on social media. Like even the stuff I've done with my mum and she just wants to share it on social media. And I'm like, I just don't want it on social media. And I know my mum's like, oh, I don't want her to, like, she probably thinks it's because I don't want to be seen with her, but it's not that at all. It's just, I don't want other people seeing what I'm doing. I just feel like I'm being very selfish about me at the minute. I just, it's mine and it's, I want to protect it. And I don't want people knowing some things, which sounds very counterintuitive because I'm sharing a lot of my brain process on here, but it's like, it's, it's so different. I don't know how to explain it. This is me talking through a process and trying to find sense and trying to find clarity and trying to share my logic so that you can learn and grow in the same way. It's a little bit of me trying to be understood, I think, because I feel like I've been so misunderstood in my life. But there's also an element of like, I'm just here and I'm just me. And I start the podcast by saying, hello and welcome to Fumbling Forwards. We're fumbling forwards together with me and Louis the Cavapoujon because it's just me and Louis here. It's just us with you. And that's what's important for me. And this is what's important for me in my life at the minute is the emotional connection with people. I feel like I've not had it for so long. I feel like I got a lot of my emotional connection from people from sharing the things that I did or that I had on social media. And when I stopped doing that, I do feel a massive disconnect. And I'm connecting in different ways with people and going for coffees and like, like daytime walks. And I don't show it. It's just a change. And I think that shift, that change is very similar to how my social shift is going as well. Like I'm around people who don't really share that either. And 
I'm still connected on social media with the people who do show it. So I'm feeling like, I'm still feeling like I'm missing out <laughs> because I'm seeing it on social media and I still want to see what people are getting up to and to connect and still have that kind of, hey, like it's nice to see what you're getting up to, that connection to like the past self. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, why do I even have social media? I have social media for my business, but my private social media, I don't even post on it. I don't even really use it. So I'm just a bit like, if I had it my way, if my business wasn't reliant on social media, I just wouldn't have it. Never thought those words would ever come out my mouth. <laughs> Somebody who lived and breathed social media. I think something that I'm thinking and that's kind of processing in the back is that I often think that people think badly of me and that people think negative things about me. And that's why they leave me out or that's why they do what they do. And I think what my therapist was getting at is that it's sometimes the opposite. Sometimes people leave you out because you make them feel a certain way about themselves and they don't want to feel like that. So they would rather you just not be there so that they can feel good about themselves because you make them feel less good about themselves. I don't know if it's how I used to present myself in the achievements that I did or maybe it's the way that I dress. Maybe it's the way that I speak. Maybe it's the type of things I talk about. I don't know but maybe it can make people feel inferior and that's why they push me away. And actually, if I viewed it from the perspective of people think you're really intelligent, people think that you're really successful and it makes them feel less than, I would totally get it. I would I totally get it. I don't know what it is. I can't know because I'm not other people. But I think viewing it from a different perspective, people aren't leaving me out because there's something wrong with me. Maybe people are leaving me out because there's something right with me and it makes them feel less than. And it's scary for me to say this because I don't want to come across as being narcissistic. People are leaving me out because I'm so amazing. <laughs> That's what I hear that other people are going to think listening to this. That I think I'm so amazing that people don't want to hang around with me. Or maybe it's just because you're an arsehole is what I hear. Maybe it's just because you're an arsehole everyone leaves you out. But I know I'm not an arsehole. I know that I try so hard for everyone just to get along and to just have a nice life. And just to invite everyone and do fun things and just enjoy our such a short period on this floating rock like so that's the only reason I know that sometimes people don't invite me places because I can be a bit of an e or but something that my therapist reminded me of today is even Winnie the Pooh and his friends didn't leave out e or because he was sad if people are okay with themselves they won't leave you out just because you're being miserable and sad I wouldn't leave someone out because they're always sad around me unless it rubbed off on me unless I started like pulling on a lot of their negativity that's very different or unless they kept pulling me into games then I probably wouldn't I'd distance myself a little bit it depends how much of an impact it has on me but that's the point people distance if it's affecting them in some way and clearly I'm affecting people in some way that they try to keep me away I think I needed to know that I wasn't being left out because there was something wrong with me because I always think that there's something wrong with me and that I need to change it how can I fix it when actually I don't want to fix it. I am me and I am who I am. I'm not going to change that for anybody. And if you don't like it, then yes, don't hang out with it. Great. And this is what I think I fell in the trap of. I got left out from that thing and I felt like, oh, I need to change it. I need to be accepted. Actually, I don't need to be accepted. You don't want me in that thing. That's fine. That's absolutely fine with me. It didn't feel fine, but it does now because it makes sense. That person needed me not to be there for a reason. That's fine. Because I actually, looking back, didn't want to be part of it anyway. I think old version of me wanted to be part of it. And I wanted to just feel a connection with them. But now I'm just kind of like, well, I have a connection with them anyway. It's just not that one. But like, look how much brighter I seem. The room actually looks lighter. This is so weird. Like, depression can make the room feel so gloomy. And like, I know the sun's just come out. Oh my God, there's a heart in the clouds. Interesting. I keep hearing that love actually quote. If you really look for it, you'll see love everywhere. Well, you can look at how I've decorated the room with my love. <laughs> yeah, but clearly I've put effort into painting the walls and hanging things on the walls. And then Andy fixed this for me. So with love, like for me, my stepdad fixed the curtain poles. Like there's so much that shows love. This pillow I got from my future mother-in-law. So if you actually look for it, there is love everywhere. I just keep hearing that quote in my mind and I haven't seen love actually recently. I don't know why that's there, but maybe that quote has come into my mind to remind me to look for the good things, to remind me to look for love. Maybe it's there to remind you to look for love. 
when you look around, what do you see? So if you're thinking about buying a certain car, you start seeing that car everywhere. And it is a really real thing. If you plant a seed in your subconscious about something, you'll see it everywhere. It'll feel more real. If you plant a seed of happiness or love or joy or being included, you'll start suddenly seeing all the things that make you feel included, that make you feel seen, that make you feel loved. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start looking around for inclusion, feeling included, and I'm going to start looking for love everywhere. Where do I see love? Thank you for listening to another episode of Fumbling Forwards. I hope you got something out of this. I definitely do. I think it's the same as therapy. Sometimes I'll go to a session, I'll be like, oh my god, I got so much out of that. Sometimes I'll be like, I'm glad I went. Kind of the same as podcasts. Sometimes I'm like, I got so much out of that podcast. And then other times I'm like, well, I'm glad I listened. I don't know how much I got from it, but I definitely like aligned with some of it. And I think that's kind of what fumbling forwards is. I'm just fumbling, fumbling forwards. Sometimes you'll take something from it. Sometimes you won't. And I think I'm so het up on trying to get, get it right, get people to listen and enjoy and keep listening to the next one and the next one and the next one. And actually, I've not done an episode for months. I still haven't uploaded these episodes that I've recorded, but I'm getting more followers still and people are still listening to the old episodes. So it's still alive. It's still there. It's still doing something. And I don't need to do it right. I don't need to get it right. I don't need people to follow the whole journey. People will join for some of the journey and leave. It's like life. People will come for their chapter and leave. Maybe people will stay for a few chapters. Maybe some people will stay for the whole book. But that's me. That's kind of my thing. I used to always dip in and out of things. And now there's just things that I'm wanting to commit to properly. And fumbling forwards is one of them. And maybe there'll come a time where I don't even want to share what I'm going through or don't even really want to use fumbling forwards. Maybe it'll turn into an education thing. I don't know, but this is what it's for right now. And I'm just following the wave. So thank you for for being on that wave and surfing it with me and sometimes treading in the water with me. (laughs) Have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you for fumbling forwards with me. And if you really look for it, you might just see love everywhere.